Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So vertical and horizontal asymptotes are basically lines on a graph or imaginary lines on a graph where the graph never touches but really gets really close to. So there's two types, vertical and horizontal. There's also slant, but that's another video. So for now, we're just going to focus on vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So on the left over here, this graph, we have an example of a vertical asymptote. The line in purple, it's dashed because it is imaginary. It's the line of x equals negative 1. Now, as you can see, this imaginary line is like kind of against this graph. So this is our graph. Um, it kind of goes really close to that dashed line but it will never touch it. it will continue on and on and that dashed line will continue on and on so it's going to gradually get closer and closer to that line but it will never touch that line that's because that line is the vertical asymptote where the graph will never pass so the graph will continue on and on towards the vertical asymptote but it will never cross the vertical asymptote the same goes for the horizontal asymptote. The only difference between vertical and horizontal is obviously vertical is a straight line from top to bottom. So it's normally the equation of an x value. And then a horizontal asymptote is horizontal. So it's normally the equation of a, of a y value, as you can see here. So the graph will just come all the way down here and continue on and on and on. And then this horizontal asymptote will also continue on and on, but they will never touch. So the horizontal asymptote is kind of like a guideline to show you where the graph will never cross. There is one important point to remember, and that is a graph can pass through the horizontal asymptote at least once. It doesn't have to, but it can. So this is going to be a really quick introduction on how to solve for the vertical asymptote. So let's say you have a rational equation. So we have a rational equation over here. It's rational because it's dividing two factors and it sort of has the division sign. That's one way to think of a rational equation. And it has a numerator of x and a denominator of x plus 4. So when you're solving for the vertical asymptote, the first step you're going to do is set the denominator equal to 0. In this case, the denominator is x plus 4. So x plus 4 equals 0. The next step is to solve for x. Now solving for x is very straightforward. You just bring all the terms to one side and bring the x to the other side and technically you've solved. So let's try to remove this 4 from this side. So you're going to subtract 4 on both sides and that's going to result in x equals negative 4. If you don't understand that, I would recommend you watch videos on rearranging linear equations so you know how to solve for x. So this final equation, x equals negative 4, is the equation of your vertical asymptote. Now to show you how this looks, when you draw it on a graph, and let's say this is the point negative 4, then this line x equals negative 4 will be your vertical asymptote. So your graph could technically look like this. It could look like this, you know, so on and so forth. So that's all there is to the vertical asymptote. So now we're going to be talking about the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote, as I said before, is the imaginary line that goes horizontally. So let's use the same equation as before, y equals x over x plus 4. So when you're working with the horizontal asymptote, you have to look at both the numerator and the denominator. And you're going to look at the highest power of x on the top and the highest power of x on the bottom. So on the top of our equation, we have x to the power of 1. Because there is no power to the x, we're just going to presume that it's 1. The same goes for the bottom, it's just x to the power of 1. So they're both equal. The highest power of x on both top and bottom of the um, fraction is equal. Now let's look at this little side note I have over here. You're going to need to memorize this when you're working with horizontal asymptotes because it's the only way you'll be able to tell what the horizontal asymptote is. It's a set of rules technically. So if both the top and bottom powers of x are equal, you're going to divide the coefficients and that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. If the top is greater, so let's say the top has a value of x squared and the bottom only has x, then that means there will be no horizontal asymptote. So your answer is going to be none. Now let's say the bottom is greater. So let's say the bottom has a value of x squared, then your horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to zero and that's it. So that's the final. If the bottom has a greater um, highest power of x, then it's going to be y equals zero. So you are going to need to memorize this. There is no way around it, but you can come up with cool maybe acronyms or something to remember it. So let's solve this for this equation. So let me have first, our first step is to look at the highest power of x on the top and on the bottom. So on the top it's 1 and on the bottom it's 1. So if both are equal and you look at our rules, that means you have to divide, divide the coefficients. If you divide the coefficients, the coefficient of the x at the top is 1 and the coefficient of the x at the bottom is also 1 because there is no 
number in front of them. So dividing the coefficients just equals 1, and your final answer for the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. So let's get into a couple of examples. So this is going to be our first example at the bottom. I have set the sort of set of rules for the horizontal asymptote at the top, just so you know what they are. But remember that if you're in a test or something like that, you probably won't have it. So at the bottom, we have x squared over x minus 4. To find the vertical asymptote, which I've labeled as VA over here, you set the denominator equal to 0. So the denominator is x minus 4. You set that equal to 0. This will then become, let's add 4 to both sides to get rid of this negative 4 over here, will become x equals 4. So x equals positive 4 is your final value or equation for the vertical asymptote. Let's work on the horizontal asymptote. Now, in this equation, you can tell that the power of two, a power of x at the top or numerator is two, and the power of x at the bottom is one. So it's greater on the top, so that means that there will be no horizontal asymptote. So you're just gonna wanna write none for horizontal asymptote. So this is our next example. We have the equation x over x squared plus 6x plus 9. So first, let's find the horizontal asymptote in this one instead of doing the vertical asymptote first. So the horizontal asymptote, you can tell that the power on the bottom is 2, so the highest power of x. We do have two x terms, but the highest one is 2 on the bottom, and the top only has one x term, and its only power is 1. So it's greater on the bottom, and as you can see from our set of rules, that means that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Let's move on to the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote, you have to set the denominator equal to 0. The denominator in this case is x squared plus 6x plus 9. So let's set x squared plus 6x plus 9 and set it equal to 0. To solve this, I would factorize it first so it makes it easier to solve. Factorizing this will just result in x plus 3, the whole square equals 0. Now if you don't know how I did that, go check out my video on the easiest way to solve quadratic equations and you'll be able to see how I got from this to this. Now from this, ex from this example, we are going to solve for x. To solve for x, you just set whatever whatever's inside the brackets equal to 0, so x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 on both sides to get rid of the 3, and you'll get x equals negative 3. So that is going to be your final answer, and that's your equation for the vertical asymptote of this equation over here. So this is our last example. As you can see at the top, our equation is 3x squared over 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. So let's start off with the horizontal asymptote so we get that out of the way. As you can tell in this equation, the top only has one value of x and its power is 2. So the highest power is 2. And at the bottom, we have two x terms, but the highest one has a power of 2. So the, on the bottom, the power is 2 as well. So that means that both are equal. So both, both highest powers of x are equal for the numerator and denominator so we're going to divide the coefficients you always divide the numerator by the denominator so the horizontal asymptote is 3 over 4 you're going to take the coefficients of the specific x terms that have the highest power of x and then you're going to divide the coefficients so our final answer for the horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 over 4 it is a fraction but that's just how it is so let's do the vertical asymptote vertical asymptote we set the denominator equal to 0 so 4x squared plus 16x plus 16 equal to 0. The first thing I would do here is divide out a common factor. As you can see, 4 is a common factor in all of these. So I'm going to divide the whole equation by 4. And you're going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Because 0 divided by 4 is just 0. Now to get from here to here, you're going to factor. If you factor this, you get x plus 2. The whole square equals 0. Now, of course, check out the same video to see how I did this. It's just easy factorization. Next, you're going to set the st um, stuff inside the brackets equal to 0. Subtract 2 on both sides, and you'll get x equals negative 2. So this will be your final answer for the vertical asymptote of this rational function over here. And that's it for this video, so make sure you comment down below any questions.